Let's say you got a chiller project. You receive the schematic drawing and the BQ that contains information about the chiller. You read through everything and found that the chiller capacity is given but not the flow rate. Without the flow rate, you can't size the pump and without the pump, you can't estimate the cost. So where do you get the flow rate? Is it possible to calculate it? If so, how to calculate the flow rate? Flow rate is calculated using the heat transfer equation. Q is the capacity in kilowatt. Rho is the density of water which is 1000 kg per meter cube. The small Q is the flow rate in meter cube per second. C is the specific heat of water which is 4.2 kJ per kgc. Delta T is the difference between the chill water supply and return temperature. For chill water, the typical supply temperature is 6.7 degrees Celsius and the return is 12.2. With that, we can calculate the chill water flow rate. Assume the chiller capacity is 300 ton. We need to convert it into kilowatt. So, 300 times 12,000 will convert into BTU per hour and divide by 3412 to become kilowatt. On the other side, water density is 1000 times Q, the flow rate, times the specific heat, which is 4.2, times 12.2 minus 6.7, the chill water supply return temperature difference. So the flow rate is 0 0.0457 meter cube per second. Multiply this by 1000, we will convert it into 45.7 liter per second. So this is the chill water flow rate requirement. If we take 45.7 liter per second and multiply it by 15.85, we'll get 724 GPM, gallon per minute. Then, 724 divided by 300 ton is 2.41. So this is a quick way to calculate chill water flow rate. We just use the rule of thumb of 2.4 GPM per ton. For example, 450 ton times 2.4 is 1080 GPM. Divide this by 15.85, we'll get 68 liter per second. Another example, if it's 1000 ton, multiply by 2.4, then you get 2400 GPM. For condenser water flow rate, the calculator is the same, except we need to include the heat of the chiller. We use the efficiency of the chiller to estimate this heat in my video about chiller, I explain why water cool chiller is more efficient than air cool chiller. The efficiency of a typical water cool chiller is about 0.6 kW per ton. So, multiply 0.6 by 300 ton will give us the heat in kW. On the other side, the delta T is now based on the condenser water. For condenser water, the supply is typically 30 degrees Celsius and the return is 35 degrees Celsius. So, put everything into the equation and we get 58.8 liter per second. Similarly, we can derive the rule of thumb for condenser water, which is 3.0 GPM per ton. So in summary, chill water flow rate is 2.4 GPM per ton, and condenser water flow rate is 3.0 GPM per ton. However, remember that 2.4 is based on 6.7 and 12.2 degrees Celsius of chill water supply and return temperature. And 3.0, for the condenser water, it's based on 30 degrees Celsius and 35 degrees Celsius condenser supply and return temperature. If any of these design temperature change, the rule of thumb value will also change. Earlier, we used 0.6 kW per ton as the efficiency of the chiller. Kilowatt is the power input and ton is the cooling capacity. So kilowatt per ton is power input divided by cooling capacity. The unit for power input is always kilowatt, but the unit for cooling capacity can be ton, kilowatt, and BTU per hour. For cooling capacity, we normally use ton for chiller. Then, 1 ton is equivalent to 12,000 BTU per hour, and 1 kilowatt is equivalent to 3412 BTU per hour. So if you have ton and you want to convert to kilowatt, you first need to convert it into BTU per hour and then to kilowatt. So, 300 ton multiplied by 12,000 equal to 3.6 million BTU per hour. Then, 3.6 million BTU per hour divided by 3412 equals to 1055 kilowatt. So, to convert from ton to kilowatt, we multiply 12,000 
and divide 3412. However, there's a faster way to do it. 12,000 divided by 3412 is around 3.5. So you can straight away multiply 300 by 3.5 to get 1050 kilowatt. On the flip side, if you want to convert from kilowatt to ton, you need to multiply by 3412 and divide by 12,000. Or you can straight away divide 3.5 to get 301 ton. So for efficiency calculation, if the chiller capacity is 300 ton and the power input of the chiller is 180 kilowatt, then 180 divided by 300 equals to 0.6 kilowatt per ton. If your cooling capacity is instead 1055 kilowatt, then you need to convert it into ton and calculate the kilowatt per ton. But another way to calculate chiller efficiency just using kilowatt is by dividing the cooling capacity by the power input. 1055 kilowatt divided by 180 kilowatt equals to 5.86 and this is known as COP, coefficient of performance. For existing chiller, if you want to calculate its current capacity, the same formula can be used but you need to measure the flow rate across the chiller and the chill water supply and return temperature. Assume you measure the flow rate is 50 liter per second and the supply and return temperature is 8 and 11 degrees Celsius. Using the equation, the chiller capacity is 630 kilowatt. Divide it by 3.5 and you get 180 ton. For new chiller capacity calculation, step 1 is perform a cooling load calculation. We need to know how much heat need to be removed. Step 2 is determine the quantity of ASU. We need to divide the space in the building and decide which ASU serve which area. Step 3 is calculate the ASU cooling coil capacity. In my video about ASU cooling coil design calculation, I explained that we need to account for outdoor air, fan motor heat gain and duct losses when sizing the ASU. And for the final step, the sum of all ASU capacity is the total chiller capacity that you need. After that, we need to determine how many chiller we need and what is the capacity of each chiller. Different combinations have different advantages. For example, if you need 2000 ton, you may use two chiller with each at 1000 ton. Less chiller is simple and cheaper. Or you can use four chiller, each with 500 ton. The benefit of having more chiller is you have backup, redundancy. In case one chiller down, you still have 75% of the total capacity. Another combination is three 600 ton and one 200 ton chiller. Big chiller can't operate at very low capacity. You need a baby chiller if you have low load conditions. That's all for this video. Thank you.